old anime. I have no idea when it was made. But we just saw it on YouTube. It's free to watch. Well, I don't know if it's actually free, but no one seems to care that it's up there. <laughs> I mean, it's got 400,000 views. It's Bao. Um, I don't oh, actually know what that means. It, it means Ba King. I don't know what the Ba stands for, but... Um, uh, Tara, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, so that's what we watched today, and it was absolutely wonderful, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> but I'll let, uh, obviously, um, for old anime, you gotta do it the best way. You have to watch it dubbed because the dub <laughs> is so great all the time. It is so funny to watch the dub, um, and it's funny uh, even in the comments. Some people would defend the dub, um, like, "Oh, well, they did the best for the time," and it's like, "No, they didn't. They just no. didn't. They didn't hire actors to do these." These dubs they just didn't even try they didn't care they weren't getting much money out of this so they didn't care and uh that's really the nature of old dubs but you know what i'm really curious on sam Vin's opinion on this because we didn't watch this together and we totally should have that was a mistake and if we ever watch an anime like this we're gonna watch it together and record our reactions i think because that... I, I, I think we should I, th yeah. I think i think um Almost doing it MST three K style. That kind of that would be another thing that I think we could probably do for all the listeners. Just like upload our riff tracks of the thing. But, uh, um, especially for these old animes, we gotta do it for them because we've gotta do it. All right, I, I want to hear Sam Ben's material, um, uh, what he has to say. So I'm gonna let him uh, take the stand. It was a steaming crock of shit. <laughs> it was crap. <laughs> it, was, it was like it was like JoJo, but without being intentionally camping over the top. Which is funny because it was done by Hirohiko Araki, who I think is the uh, mangaka for uh, JoJo. As I'm sure he is. He is. Uh, what, what am I saying? I'm sure he is. I know he is. Well, I don't think I don't think this OVA was done by him. I think no. the manga, I think the manga was, but uh, much like the first JoJo OVA, uh, they screwed it up and made it way too serious. <laughs> actually, I'm I I have a bit of a soft spot for the first JoJo OVA. Actually, just. Um, I think it's mostly because of, despite how serious it is, it is kind of faithful to the characters, at least. I struggle to really see how... I, I know it's an OVA, I know it was only 50 minutes, but even this, I struggle... I fail to see how it could have been um, faithful to the characters, because character development just happens in a snap. It has the pupa and the diabolic clovers problem, actually, of not actually developing the characters. It's like, oh, I feel this emotion right now. Especially the main character who, I mean, okay, uh, literally the only character who you could say legitimately gets development is the old man, in which case, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. He at least uh, had something. I'm surprised he got anything. Oh, God. Um, yeah. For those of you who've not seen this show, uh, it's probably about what I think has got to be the dumbest government secret weapon project <laughs> in history. I have to describe this because you have to hear this shit. It's amazing. Basically, there's this government agency that's creating super weapons. And of course, they inject some kid with this secret weapon of theirs. And it doesn't really turn out like they wanted. But for some reason, he turns into a mutating badass. And it's like, okay, this is an anime stock trope that's as old as time. Like, superhero comics were doing this long before anime. It's like, I get it. I get the concept. I really do. But it's a worm. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that gives you superpowers is this it it looks like it looks like a leech and they call it a worm and it's injected into you and it gives you the ability to create magical lightning and transform and and go blue super saiyan and it's like what a load of all shit <laughs> uh you got to love um what, what the best thing about it to me is uh, the fact that they create the super weapon, right? They never tell you what they want to use it for. And all the whole OVA is just about right. destroying the super weapon. I'm like, why did you even make it if you're going to go through all this effort just to destroy it? That's the thing. It's like, um, 
Obviously, the kid with this super weapon inside him escapes, and they send and they spend the rest of the OVA uh, trying to hunt him down and kill him. And surprise to surprise, that doesn't go very well. It just ends with this kid wiping everyone out with these superpowers. And oh my god, like, if it wasn't for the dub, I'd say that this would be like the action movie version of Diabolic Lovers, because the plot is predictable as hell hell like even by the standards of bad 90s anime this is some seriously predictable plotting it's honestly quite boring in a lot of places it's like there's the hitman who shoots him um who's kind of cold and mysterious then there's the noble warrior that gets thrown in randomly at the end who comes back with a heroic second wind and also gets defeated there's the mad scientist there's the innocent little girl who's Completely in love with the hero for no reason. And by the way, <laughs> she's 10. He's 17. Nine, actually. Yeah. Oh, that makes it so much better. <laughs> so yeah, it's creepy and I, was, and I wasn't comfortable with that. I was like, okay, anime, I know this is a stock trope for you, but please, 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 please stop. Stop having kids say, I will wait until I'm... 18 or whatever and then you'll want me stop it it's creepy oh, i don't like it that, that is a, that is a really um old trope that sometimes I, I, I don't know if it, it gets used as much anymore but it still gets used it's uh, still creepy when it happens it's very creepy when it happens but um i so, I, I think it happens in the end of persona 4 if you max nanako's social link i mean I love Nanako, but that was just... Nope, 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 nope. The, the funny thing about it is this girl's in the OVA, and um, uh, they, they act like they're chasing her at the beginning and not the main character. And then, and then they just kind of forget, forget about her. And they just were like, we have to kill her. And I'm like, well, why did you even want her in the first place? I mean, her power was actually probably the most unique thing about the OVA. I'm not even sure what it was. Uh, it, yeah, I'm not sure what it was. It, it, it seems to be uh, precog. Plot uh, convenience. It, it seems like she could uh, see the future to some extent, or something like that. But yeah, it was more uh, plot convenience, the power, superpower. <laughs> the the but power it, of plot convenience. That, 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 that's a pretty unique power, I gotta say. So Wolver but, gets a healing factor, Storm gets weather control, this little girl gets plot convenience. I like it. Uh, it and it's funny because, you know, this girl has after that they just completely forget about her they only care about Bao and she's just she with... really does become an accessory to the plot doesn't she but she talks and she has to talk because the main character doesn't say anything other than what he says in his head like like oh my god I don't know what's going on here <laughs> <laughs> that's all his dialogue it's literally a variation of huh what am I doing what did I just do and I <laughs> And halfway in, it's like they realize that this guy had no personality whatsoever. So they pretty much just say, yeah, let's keep him transformed for the second half of the movie and just have him not say anything ever. Yeah. Most of the dialogue goes to the scientists who, kind of like Pupa, I thought these guys were probably the best characters, if only because they had some degree of character. <laughs> I mean, uh, like... It I was s cartoon supervillain, but at least that's a character. I mean, it was... You know what? It was kind of funny because he didn't seem, yeah. he didn't even seem to care that uh, his creation was basically killing everyone. He seemed to enjoy it, actually. And I I thought that was actually somewhat funny and somewhat, you know, endearing in a in a sense because he, he's like, well, he's going to come kill me, but at least, at least he is my ultimate super weapon. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna destroy the world, but, uh, but by God, he's gonna look good doing it. So you can't help but enjoy the old scientist too, to some degree, because he he at least out of all the actors, he has the one actor who somewhat tried. You know, you know. Yeah. I know T Hawk tried. Uh, well, no, he didn't, but he was funny too. But <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. That was the thing. Like, I'm not an expert on Native American culture. Like, I've never met anyone. From of Native American descent, and even though I know nothing about Native America, um, when this Native American dude comes in and says, "Ah, oh, we are noble warriors. We must do battle," and he starts carving a symbol into his chest and shooting psychic rays out of his hands, I'm like, "Hmm, I can't help but think that maybe you've somewhat missed the point." Uh, I like how he—the first thing he does is he shoots the fireball and. 
you know, he, he shoots it, and then uh, Bao dodges it, and then it just rolls up the corpses on, like, <laughs> the noble what? native warrior's power. <laughs> Why? It makes no sense. This is, like, the most gratuitous violence ever. It's so Oh my god, the, violent, the violence in this show was amazing. This was, like, this was worse than Pupa in terms of violence, but... I was okay with it because it was just so over the top and silly. <laughs> Which, like, for example, this guy shoots it. Okay, a guy shoots a person. Now, normally you fire a gun, a dude falls down dead or injured or whatever. Like, it's over it really quickly. Even in something that loves to dismember its characters, like even in Bleach. Bleach is the world's worst for chopping off arms and things. But even then, it's normally clean and it's instantaneous and it happens fairly quickly. That's not the case here. Um, say you get shot or you get stabbed or whatever, you generally tend to kind of keel over in pain for about five minutes, um, all the while pulling really, really stupid faces that kind of explode into various pustules, and then you just explode. <laughs> it's like, what? What am I watching? My, my, obviously, I think the best one is actually the first one he kills, because what's he doing? He grabs his face, bur melts, oh, his, <laughs> melts his face, lets him crash into a fire, and then he burns to death and becomes a skeleton. <laughs> That was pretty amazing. Like, all the that, way. The one I like is... Um, I quite liked the um, cyborg dude, who's like... He's like hunting the main character, and then he gets... Um, you think he's been killed or whatever, and all of a sudden he reappears out again, lit again, literally out of nowhere, carrying a huge gun, and he looks like Arnie, the Terminator. Like, half of his body is um, human, the other half is like robot. And you're like... Wait, how are you a robot now? And okay, um, oh well, uh, just to say, um, Sam Van dropped for a while, but I'll edit that part out. But uh, we'll keep on going. What were we even talking about? <laughs> we were still on the robot. Okay. Um, yeah, he just kind of appears out of nowhere. He's a robot all of a sudden. He looks like Arnie, and then he shoots um the hero, and he just kind of walks off with this girl, and. I don't know who this guy is or where he came from or what, but for some reason, he's just my favorite character. <laughs> he was pretty random. I mean, <laughs> just to be a random robot for like- Was he the same guy as the coffee guy? No, no, the coffee guy was T-Hawk. Oh yeah. Oh, the, the coffee line is the best line in the whole movie. <laughs> there are uh, some and I, I will reenact it for you. He drinks a sip of coffee and goes, ah. Tepid. The only way to drink coffee is hot. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was paid to write that. I would. I don't know what the Japanese line is, but I'm pretty sure it's just as bad, you know. And just, just to, to not just mock the dub. I mean, bad, 80s subs could be quite bad too. Like, oh yeah. yeah. The acting w wouldn't be very good, probably here either. So, I'm not just ma mocking the dub. It, it, they didn't really try that much back in the day either. Um, I mean, it depended on the anime, of course, but for this, I doubt they tried very hard. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen it. Maybe it's fine. It was the well, line that, it was the line, I think it was the dialogue that really cemented this as just being bad. Like, as you said, there's the, sometimes it's unintentional, like the coffee line, but sometimes the characters start talking like they're William Shatner. On oh, God, at the beginning. Oh, oh God. God, at the beginning. <laughs> there like... are these two generic soldiers, and they really just feel like anime William Shatner, and you're like, oh, my God, please tell me this was deliberate, because if not, I have to deal with the fact that there are people who think that's acting, other than William Shatner. Yeah, it's... it's, it's <laughs> and that would be a sad thing. It's, it's quite hilarious, I mean... The, the the extras are all just so magnificently cast. <laughs> cast. It's just. It's just. Think of the God. worst fan dub you could possibly think of, and then magnify it. You're not even half to how bad the acting is. Uh yes. Uh yeah. I I I. You know, and uh, to go back to the girl, um, just uh, 
I mean, obviously everything that comes out of her mouth is insincere as hell, but without her, the main character basically wouldn't even have any dialogue at, uh, at all, you know, because besides like, hey, I think we should get some gas or something. <laughs> 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 and that's like, he say he sounds like that. He's just like this soft pansy voice that just, that's I don't like know. He's quite a big guy, the main character. Like yeah. he's he's built like a '90s anime hero and everything that implies, and yet he sounds like a wuss. In fact, he kind of sounds. Um, how to say this nicely? He sounds like someone from Texas trying to be butch, but their voice hasn't broken yet. That's yeah. No, I mean the, the the thing about him is his actor mumbled a lot, so I couldn't even yeah. understand. I couldn't even understand what he was saying half the time. So it was like, oh my god, what is he saying? I guess it doesn't matter. You know, they were just. Uh, I, I mean, this whole anime, as everyone knows, is it, 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 well not as a as we both know, is just an excuse for gratuitous death. That's all it is for. <laughs> it, it has no other purpose besides that. I mean, there's a scene uh, between the girl and the boy, um, and they somehow grow super close to each other, even though they've known each other for probably less than a day, and uh, they've had a total of two conversations in which the main character says absolutely nothing back to her, really, other than yeah. Huh. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, what's going uh, on? <laughs> and what's going on? And <laughs> And the girl, uh, such, this is the, the, I just love this scene so much. The girl's like, hey, you're 17, right? I'm almost 10. That's pretty close. <laughs> and then there's this awkward silence that follows. I have no idea what there's, I have no idea what the actual intention is. I have the it's, idea that, like, maybe there was meant to be some kind of internal monologue in the original Japanese version, but in English, that's just, like, all the actors just kind of, reacting going what yes it was just dead silence and that was probably the best scene in the whole movie was, just just because it was like yeah it was, the, it was the most awkward thing in the world and and then uh, and of course you know you can't have a uh, japanese um obviously this pedophilia had to go through somebody where balo had to give her a kiss to risk resuscitate her back to life with his magical plot convenient power because he has plot convenient power. These, both was these he, characters are plot convenient powers. I, I thought he was like bleeding from her, from his mouth into hers. Like, okay, like there's really much difference. But yeah, I, I didn't really know what was going on there. Well, uh, yeah, Bowel's just as bad as her with the plot convenient powers. I mean, he just <laughs> he just gets he red. Really is. He just gets random power ups. I mean, the coolest thing he did was he ripped his own arm off when it was stuck in the he wall. pulled a zod, and then he put it back on. And it was like, which, yeah, which, I, which is complete rubbish. I mean, come on, you know. Well, I, mean, I, I was hoping he went the whole. He'd go the whole way with the Zod ripping off. I mean, if you're gonna rip off the Zerk, at least do it right. Have have I mean, Bowel like beat the I guy mean, with his literally. own arm. Literally, they, if they were trying to make a badass anime, they should have made him go the rest of the show with his arm ripped off. That would have been cooler. <laughs> Using the other half of it as a clop. <laughs> that would have been brilliant. It would have been over the top. It would have been brilliant. And, and then after he beat the T-Hawk guy, you know, the random 80s music kicked in, and it was wonderful. The soundtrack was laughably bad, but in a good way. <laughs> it was. So, uh, would you say this anime is so bad it's good, or is it just <laughs> rubbish? Um, I think sometimes it's so bad it's good, but on the whole I thought it was just bad. I think the problem was, as you uh, quite rightly pointed out, it had the JoJo OVA problem of being a bit too dark and serious. What I would have expected um, to make it so bad it's good for me is for the voice acting to be even worse and for the dialogue to be worse. Because the thing is, the dialogue actually took itself semi-seriously. Um, and sometimes that's funny, but it was just kind of... It was on the border between so bad it's bad and so bad it's good, but I don't think it fell into the good category because there was too much seriousness about it. That, that which is, is true. Uh, which is amazing considering how ridiculous this story is. I could not believe it. We we did need we did need more. Uh, we needed to be the, drunk for it. I think. Well, we we needed a lot more. Uh, the only way to drink coffee is hot. We needed way more lines like <laughs> we that. We needed more lines like that. 
<laughs> that 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 would have made the whole thing entertaining. I will agree. The beginning was kind of boring, and then once the death started, I just started because the only thing to really enjoy is how ridiculous the deaths are and yeah, it, uh, it, it's, how funny they are. Just I, it, it's really kind of a violence hentai in terms of how gratuitous the deaths are. It's it, it's completely nuts. Um, but other than that, there's really not that much to it. It's very, very straight, apart from, as we say, all the random gore. There's really not that much to it. And I think that for that reason, I have to say it's bad, but it's not It's not the room of anime yet. But maybe we'll find that someday. We, we have to find the room of anime. It has to exist, where they and try it, so hard, and they make such bad dialogue, it's such bad scene placement, and it's just hilariously awkward the whole time. Oh wait, didn't we find that already? I think it was called Sword Art Online. Sword Art Online is pretty close to being the room of anime, <laughs> but there's a problem in that the people actually like Sword Art Online for legit. Oh, duh. <laughs> I mean, and uh, those people, you know, yeah, wish fulfillment too strong, bros. Um, <laughs> um, in which case, you should just watch Bao because the wish fulfillment <laughs> is even stronger here. <laughs> I have to say, if this is your wish fulfillment to be implanted with a parasite, have a ten-year-old as your girlfriend, and to be hunted by mad scientists, and to have no personality, I have a lot of questions about your wish fulfillment that I don't want to know the answers okay, to. Okay, shut up. I didn't think about it very well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you get to be a supreme badass who gets to basically rape everything without even trying, and you get new powers every five seconds. And make out with ten-year-olds. Okay, well, I guess that part kind of ruined everything, didn't it? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, this thing could have been better if they just kept that faux romance out, because... It didn't work, it wasn't fitting, and it was just creepy. Couldn't and we I'm... um couldn't we have switched the girl, the little girl, with the other woman in this who has had no reason to be in it at all other than to be another pretty face? Right, that would have at least made sense. Like maybe she could have a crisis of conscience or something, um, where she kind of realizes, Oh my god, maybe these people are bad. Maybe I should be helping this boy and then like then you can kind of have a romance between these you know, these two adults at least. Yes, that would be something. It would be something, you know. It would be less would... creepy for one. Yeah, and then she got the, the, her and the mad scientist at the end randomly got pierced by spikes at because at, because we had to kill everything, even though that was totally <laughs> unnecessary because the base blew up anyway. So <laughs> I have to say, I absolutely love how every evil genius seems to have like a thousand tons of dynamite strapped to their headquarters. I, I just, I'm just it's like, like a law. When you build an evil death base, you have to have a self-destruct <laughs> mechanism in it. And I, did, I did like that scene for that reason. <laughs> I wish you all good luck. <laughs> 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 oh, that was so funny. Uh, yeah. So, at, at the very least, we could say one thing about this anime. Much like Pupa, it was over quickly, unlike Diabolic Lovers. <laughs> so it wasn't super boring. I thought we agreed to never mention that show again. Oh yes, okay, never mind. Unlike, um, the show. Unlike episode two. Unlike episode two, yes. Um, so, uh, I, I, I don't know if we have anything else to say in regards to this anime. Do you have anything? Um, yeah, I think a quick note on the animation wouldn't hurt. As goofy as it was, I do kind of have to give props to the animators in a weird I, me, kind of me way. Me too. I have to say, the animators, they did a bang-up job for what they had <laughs> to deal with. For what they had to deal with. This actually, even though it's like, this was in terms of writing and story, this was the pinnacle of bad 90s anime. But the animation was actually pretty freaking sweet. It is. I mean, that, that's what made it at least somewhat enjoyable. It's like, hey, this could be pretty creative at times. I mean, like I said, the rolling ball of fire curling up all those people. That was and hilarious. Have, yeah, and I have to say, like, admittedly, the idea of the worm being bow is stupid. But I did kind of like the effect it had. Like, when it turned the dog into a huge feral monster. And what it did to the hero, he kind of turned him into star platinum gone crazy. So... Um, I did in, so I, I did like the animation. I did think the animation was pretty good, um, especially for the time. I mean, 
Yeah, this it, is the, a the doll. Hey, this is better animation than most animation we get these days. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and this but was no. made 20 years ago, but to be fair, it was only one episode, so. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, I thought everything looked really good. Um, as goofy as they were, the fight scenes were pretty well animated. Um, the animals were well animated, because not like, I. this seems like a weird thing to notice, but early on, there's a scene with all these kind of lab animals all trapped in cages and whatnot, whatnot, and they moved quite well. These things moved like actual animals, for one, um, rather than just kind of having a few frames and just being done with it. They look like feral, crazed test subjects. Like, real props to the animators. This show looks good. It's not. It looks better than it is, but it looked good. And the, the other prop we can give it for being a 1980s anime is uh, that it wasn't very sexist. It wasn't. <laughs> I mean, the girl was pretty competent for a little girl, you know? And the That's older, a point! And, and the older woman, she kicked those dogs' asses at the beginning. Yeah, like, the women were eventually written out of the story, so this doesn't really pass the Bechdel test. But for what screen time they had, they were remarkably confident and they were remarkably capable. Yes, there's a damsel in distress subplot, but until that happens, it is the least sexist of the shows we've seen, and that's something, especially for a 1980s show. And at least she's a little kid, you know, it's not like... So, yeah, know, so... so kinda, you, you, kinda, it's not that she's a damsel in distress, she's a little kid in distress, so it's a little different, you know? So, so it's forgivable. Yes. Like, so, uh, so I do give the author the, the props for not to subjugating women to, you know, and this is one of those old 1980s animes that doesn't even have to make them naked. Oh my god. Wow. That is that was, crazy. That was something that I did appreciate. The fact that it's like they didn't have any gratuitous fan service. There wasn't any. That's ridiculous, no. actually. Unless you can count the blood, the gratuitous fan service. Oh, that's people. a different kind of fan service. Yeah, but... Uh, but yeah, that, 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 that was actually uh, good on them for at least keeping the heart in the right place for that, <laughs> for those aspects. Yeah, I have to say as well, back to the animation for a second, I think the only other problem I like, I think I would have enjoyed it more if the fights had been longer. Because yeah. I thought a lot of the, the fights were good, they were well animated, but I didn't actually think that the fights were long enough. They were over too quickly. It was like, oh, he's got a problem. Bang, never mind, he's done, he's won. Oh. Yeah, I know. He just Imagine kind if of... some shit like Bleach or Naruto had been over like that. How, yeah. how much screen time could they have saved? You know, and uh, what I consider the anime with the best fights, Hunter x Hunter, you know, um, what the, the, the what they do is, uh, you know, how Bleach can get really crazy five episodes per fight or something. Yeah. Uh, or Naruto is even worse. It could go on for like eight episodes, I think. Oh, come on. And uh, But uh, Hunter x Hunter, you know, it's one episode per fight max. You know, it never goes past one. And I and I think uh, that's that should be the rule, <laughs> you know. Never go past one episode. If you're doing it, if, it, if if a fight is going past one episode, then that means that the side characters are you're either switching too much out of the fight, the side characters are taking up too much time, or you're pacing your fight way too slowly. Yeah. And um, you know, and having a million and one power ups, you know, in the middle of the fight, in which that's not necessary, really. Mm, definitely. You know, DBZ got away with that, but, you know, after DBZ, you know, we don't Honestly, see that shit I, 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 I didn't really watch DBZ. It bored me for that reason. It was like, I like a fight scene, but I like a fight scene to be long, but I don't like it to be long. Yes, I, yeah, I agree. It, it's got to be long enough that you can believe the impact of what's going down, but short enough that you don't get bored. Because if you get bored watching a fight scene, it's gone wrong. Yeah, I agree. So... Um, um, other, okay. Uh, is that going to be it for this week? I think we've got, I think we've pretty much said all we can say. All right, well, thank you for watching. Uh, next week, uh, is, does, is next Sunday going to start February? I, um, I do believe, uh, actually, is it? I think I need to check my calendar. Yes, yes, it's, it's the start of February next Sunday. Okay, the, uh, yeah, it's actually February 1st next Sunday. Which hey. means, which means... Next, uh, for, uh, February, we're gonna try to do this, uh, we're gonna have Fighting Game February, where we Woo! watch, where we watch anime adaptions of fighting games all month. <laughs> this is gonna suck. <laughs> 
and uh, you know how good those adaptions are. They're amazing. And that's yeah. why we're going to watch them. This yeah, um, we said last week that we were gonna watch Blaze Blue this week, but we oh no, or Tekken this week, but we opted not to do that. We've moved them to Fighting Game February, um, and which one are we gonna watch first? Do you think? I think we should watch Tekken. We yeah. always <laughs> you've been hyping up Tekken for a while, so I hope it lives up to expectation. I I, I do hope it. I I mean I hope I hope you like it as much as. I no, I'm just kidding. But um, 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 uh, yeah, I I think you'll get a kick out of it because Brilliant. obviously, uh, and obviously, um, when we can with bad anime, uh, if it has a dub, we're gonna watch it dubbed. We're just, gonna watch the dub, especially if it's old. Because... Definitely. And I think um, for Tekken, are we gonna try and record our reactions to it? Or... Um, uh, I don't know how long Tekken is, but uh, yeah, well, we might start recording our reactions to it. And uh, yeah, uh, and we'll put those up for people to watch as well. That's right. Um, I'm pretty sure all the whole Tekken movies on YouTube as well. So <laughs> brilliant. All right, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. All right, see you next time. See you next time on Bad Anime Sunday. <laughs>